Hey everybody. Gonna let some of you guys hop on here really quick. And then we will get going. So I've got my fall chapel here. That is not what we're painting tonight, but I want to show you this because it's time to sign up for this challenge, challenge, workshop, whatever you want to call it. I am teaching this online only through this workshop only. It's a four day workshop It starts on September 9th and runs through September 12th and you can sign up for it now. And we're going to get that link posted below and you can also, in just a second here, here we go. If you comment challenge, it will, you will get a message from my messenger bot and it will send you the link to sign up for this. So if you haven't seen this before, this is done on a palette board. You're going to learn how to make the palette board and that's optional. You can choose whether you want to build a palette board or paint it on canvas. You're not required to do it on palette board. Um, but basically I'm going to split this painting up into four mini lessons over the span of four days. So it makes it easy to digest, little nuggets of information that you can break up and just um, fit into your schedule when you have time. And the best thing about it, if you can't catch me live, sorry, I'm trying to get comments again. It's still messing up on me. I wonder if I go through Facebook, if I can see it. Um, if you can't catch, so I, guess I can't see your questions yet if you guys are asking me anything. Um, let's see if this works. Hopefully. Um, okay, hang on just a second. If you can't watch the videos live, that's what I'm telling you. If you can't watch the videos live, you will be able to go back and watch them whenever you want to. So they stay in the group. That's what I was trying to get out while I'm trying to get my iPad to cooperate with me. Thank you, Glennis. The Canada was so amazing. Um, I can't even tell you guys, not just the business side of it, but um, just to be with my girls. It is an amazing thing when you find friends like that, that, that you can spend time with and love as much as you do and do your business together. It's a very, very cool thing. It was very hard for us to say goodbye to each other. That's for sure. All right, so today we are gonna learn a little bit more about the fan brush. Some of you may be familiar with it, but I think it's always good to go back to the basics and practice. That's the best way to get better, is just keep practicing. Same with anything that you do in life. So if you guys um, just comment challenge if you want to know more about the fall challenge. And it doesn't mean you have to sign up, but it'll send you the link so you can check out all the information. It's only $15, and it's four days, September 9th through the 12th. I'm drinking some of my Chick-fil-A sweet tea right now. Okay, so do you guys want to... I've got some basic colors here. Do you guys want to see the grass or trees first? I'll kind of let you choose. I might put a little cream on here for, for some of the grass so we can do some beachy grass. I'll show you both kinds. Hey, Karen. Hey, Debbie. Lisa, Patricia. Karen votes for trees. What do you guys want to do? Glennis says grass. I'm going to start, and I'm going to show you guys a couple different things here, depending on how you have, how much paint you have in your fan brush, too. It looks like grass is taken over as the winner. We'll do both. But um, don't give up on a fan brush, okay? So it does take a little getting used to, for sure. Um, but once you get the hang of it, you'll love it and it makes doing grass and trees so, so simple. So it's just a little bit of a learning curve, um, but you, but you will get it. So this is, 
you can kind of see how much paint is in there, right? So it's kind of all together right now. So you kind of get that look with it. Now, once it starts separating a little bit, you kind of get, I need a little bit more on there. See how it gives you the separate, so you kind of get that grassy look. So usually if I'm doing grass, I want my bristles to be separated a little bit. Does that make sense? So let's start, we're doing grass first. Let me rinse some of this black out of here because I don't want black in my grass. Let's do some beachy grass first. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my brown and cream. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of this together. Let's give ourselves some ground right here. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit of yellow with that brown, just to change the color a little bit. You guys know I love my color mixing. So I want this to separate a little. Sometimes I just kind of dab it on my palette too, just so it starts, or you can run it along the edge so it starts separating a little bit. So you can do grass two different ways. You can do it kind of holding the whole brush down. I need a little bit more paint in there. Okay, like this. So it's giving you that nice base. See, I'm just kind of flicking my hand back and forth. Or we can turn it on its side. See how on the side you get the skinnier little, that's catching on some kind of bump underneath my... So it almost becomes like dry brush because there's such little paint in there. So this is using the side. See how I'm just kind of going vertical up and down. And then you can do more horizontal and it gives you a little bit thicker at the base like that. Now the other thing you can do when we're working with grass here So let's say we have these tall, skinny. This is how I teach it in my beach tutorial, which you can still buy if you go to my blog post. You can go to my blog on the social easel online paint studio.com and you'll see where you can buy that in one of my blog posts. So we also could do some kind of grass, more of like this brush stroke that I showed you earlier. So we've got these long stems that are coming out and then off the side of that we get these like fan looking brushes. I'm going to pull a little bit of black into my brown just to make that a little bit darker. Can you guys see that enough or do I need to make it go the other direction? I'm just adding, I'm gonna do it in, grab a little bit of black, just cause I want you to be able to see it. So let's do it down here again. Well, that's not what I'm wanting to do, hang on. We'll just fan that out a little bit. That's not what I'm wanting. Let's do this. I'll show you, because this is easier. Usually I just use this and make a line, but this is bumpy and it's catching, so I'm gonna show you this way instead. So you've got your long, long pieces of grass here, like this. Okay, and they don't have to be completely solid. I'm not worried about that. And then I'm gonna 
load up my black again. I see again how my bristles are separated. They're not all stuck together. So you'll learn that as you play with it. This is what it's gonna look like if they're all stuck together, th then you get obviously more separation if they're not. So I'm gonna go on the sides of all these. And you kind of get this wispy, depending on how much paint you have in there, you get a little bit different look. So I go along that skinny line and then I just kind of pull down and you get that really pretty wispy grass that you could have coming out up here. Just like that. So that is some fun grass for you. So now, and again, what I recommend, this is the same thing I tell the women in my tribe, um, my tribe is my membership. We open again September 15th, if you haven't heard yet. But this is the same thing I tell my ladies. Keep on practicing, okay? Don't expect to just put a paintbrush to the pad the very first time and you're just going to get it. You might if you're lucky, um, but it takes practice. So this is a mixed media pad that I use. You can find that in my Amazon store or you can get it at your craft store, but it's basically like a sketchbook for painting. And I tell everyone in my tribe to get this because it's nothing but just a practice book. So this is really good for you to work out and get used to doing these techniques and practice. That is the key. That is the beginning of painting is just practicing. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, and I highly recommend getting a mixed media pad and then a set of brushes. Um, so um, there's a good set in my store. I'm not, I can't remember right now if it has the fan brush in it. You may have to buy a fan brush separately. Let me look at those. For some reason, I'm thinking it does not have a fan brush in it. I'll have to go back and double check that. Okay, so that's one. Now I'm gonna show you how to do, you guys wanna learn how to do some Christmas trees? It's almost Christmas time. So I'm getting some black and some dark green. Thank you, Debbie. So let's do, I'm just gonna do one, one big Christmas tree. We'll do it over top of this. Okay, so I always give myself like a straight line. This doesn't matter what this looks like because you're gonna cover it up. So I'm gonna start at the top. Again, my bristles are separated. Now, when I am at the top, I am not pressing down like this. I'm not going all the way across. I am using the corner and I'm just kind of dabbing along because I want it to be at a point, right? So it's like a little triangle up here. I know that's hard to see because it's over that black right now. And then as I get further down, I'm still using the corner until I get to about the width of my bristles. And then I'm gonna start going out from here. So see how I'm covering that tree trunk. We're not even gonna see that. That's all gonna be covered up. And you can decide how thick you want this tree. There's so many different ways to do this. Hey, Shirley. And you can have, you can give a little bit of curve to your tree if you want. You want it to curve down a little bit. Or you could go straight across. And when I say straight across, I'm still doing the same brush stroke. I'm just getting further and further out as I go down. I need a little bit more paint in my brush. And you don't have to see a lot of separation here. So you can press down fairly hard because I'm going to come back over top of this and add some snow. And then you'll really start to be able to see some of the different areas of the tree. And I do Christmas trees, you can do them with an angled brush or you can do them with a flat brush. So there's two different ways to do it. So I'm just kind of rotating as I get to the top if I want it to be a little bit taller here. 
maybe come out a little bit more on the sides. So you can change how much you press down of your brush as you're going. So I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit because I wanna come back and add to that. Another thing you can do, and this is really simple, I'm gonna get some more black paint here. Let's say you do like um, a really pretty sunset and you just want like a silhouette of some trees. We're just gonna load this up with black Let's say this is our horizon line right here. I use this just as kind of like my base where I want my trees. Same thing. Now, if I was doing this bigger, I could go all the way, all the way across, just like I did that big Christmas tree. So down at the bottom, you can get away with that a little bit more because they're all gonna kind of blend together down at the bottom, right? That part's not gonna matter. So I'm just using the corner here. All different heights of trees. Nice little silhouette here. And I'm just rotating it around because I have more paint on that other side of my brush. So just think a little Christmas tree shapes. They can all be a little bit different, but when I go to the top, I usually turn my brush vertical so I can get that nice tip at the top. So I'm cheating a little bit here and I'm going across at the bottom because I know they're all gonna blend together. Then I turn it vertical to get that nice point at the top. So you've got a nice little silhouette of trees here, right? Not too hard. So just picture that with whatever background you want and then you can put those trees over top of it. So then what if we wanna do just a regular tree? And you could do that, I'm gonna show you with green, but you could do this with a fall tree too. Let's see, I ran out of my brown. Let me get a little bit more brown on here. I think I'm gonna go over here and just paint over top of this little mess anyways. Let me know if you guys have any questions as we're going along. And if you're new to painting with me and you want to learn more about painting, I am doing the Fall Chapel workshop. It's coming up on September 9th and you can just comment challenge and you will get sent the link for that. So if you're having fun doing this and you want to learn more about painting, that is the next opportunity to have for you where you're gonna learn a full painting from start to finish and you're even gonna learn how to build a palette board if you want to and you get the full lesson and you can watch those videos anytime you want once they are released. So I'm just gonna quickly add a little branches here. This really doesn't matter too much. Most of this is gonna be covered up. Just kind of giving you the idea of the base of my tree here. And if you weren't with me at the beginning, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. This is, and this too, this is the fall chapel painting. So this is what you'll learn how to do step by step. So you can just comment challenge and you'll get sent a message with that link. Or you can click on the link um, that's pinned in the comments. So let's see, I think this might be, I'm gonna come over this with a little bit of green. We're gonna have a couple layers to this Christmas tree. So I've got pretty much black in the back. Then I'm gonna come back with some just regular dark green that doesn't have any black added to it. 
just so we have some different areas of color here. And then once that dries, I'm gonna come back and add white over top of that. And you may not be able to see that color change too much. I'm gonna lower you just a little bit more. See if I can get you a little bit closer there. So now you can be a little bit messier and we want some different looking trees and I can push down really hard and just almost making like where they're like blobs, a little rough around our edges here. And I'm just rotating my brush to get the paint wherever I have it. See how simple that is? Already starting to look like a tree, right? Let me get a little bit more paint here. And I'm really loading the paint up on this. I'm gonna hold that a little bit closer. Can you see how much paint is in there? So you'll hear me say this again and again. You gotta have enough paint on your brush. Load it up. If you don't have enough paint on your brush, you make it much, much harder on yourself and you can't get the brush strokes to do the exact same thing that I'm doing. So we want these, these types of trees, I want it nice and rough around the edges. I don't want it to be like one round shape. What do you guys think so far? Some, some good tips you can try out? We'll leave a little bit of opening there. Now I'm gonna go straight in to some yellow. While my green is still wet, then I can get this variation in the trees here. I wonder if this light is shining too bright on that. I'm gonna turn that a little bit. And you can decide how much lighter green you want in there. Maybe add a little bit more yellow towards the top where the light might be hitting it. And if you get too much, go back with some of your dark, work some of that in. You could even get a little bit of black in there if you wanted to, add some shadows. So you're just kind of playing with it. Can you guys see that okay? So now you've got your deciduous tree and your Christmas tree. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is once we add the white, which I need to get. rinse my brush really good and I do want to show you something this is another tip for you you don't always have to this is dirty water from earlier today when I was painting that I haven't rinsed out yet so I can go from those dark colors like black and green and I can rinse my brush off okay doesn't matter what that paint water color is I'm squeezing it in my paper towel Okay, nice and clean, no paint in there, but you do want to squeeze it because sometimes water gets stuck up in these handles and then it drips down into your next color. So now I know I don't have any of that other color in there. All right, I'm just gonna kinda, I'm just taking this with my fingernail and just kinda pushing some of those back together so they're not super separated. And we'll come in with our white and you can decide how much you want. Let's start at the bottom. And just start adding. I start a little sparse first, and you don't want it to all look exactly the same. So we don't want it to just look like dashes all the way across. You may have some heavier white in some areas, a little bit lighter in others. Again, when I get up here, I'm going to rotate, get it on the corner there. So 
so I can control and make that smaller up at the top. And so now you've got your snowy white Christmas tree. Now this is obviously a little bit easier to see if, um, I'm just gonna spread this out because I've got some green here. If we had a different color background, if you had a blue sky behind this, that would stand out a lot more. Um, but those are some different tips that you can do with a fan brush. So um, they're mostly used for trees and grass. So I hope you guys enjoyed that um, and I hope you practice. If you do, make sure you join our free Facebook group and you can post your progress in there and you can share what you're working on. And this was brush number three of my series. Um, the first week we did the large flat, which is used for a lot of backgrounds and different stuff. Um, last week we did the angled brush, which is one of my favorites. This week is the fan. Next week, I'm actually jumping away from brushes and I'm gonna do palette knife. So um, palette knife has become a huge passion of mine. It's in a lot of my paintings now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some palette knife painting with you guys next week and then we'll jump back and do some brushes again. That leaves us the round and the filbert um, to go over. So hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you want to learn more, just comment challenge. You'll get sent the link for the fall um, workshop that we have going on. That starts on September 9th. So you guys have a good night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.